Hello YouTube, this is Bowtide Media. Today I have another This Week in EDM for the week up to June 6th, which is today, the day this video is being released. The way this works is I'm going to go over all the songs that came out this week in EDM, at least the stuff that I was covering. Uh, there are 28 songs total, so there are timestamps in the bottom there if you want to skip through and find the songs that you like or songs that you think are interesting. Um, but yeah, uh, the way this works is there's a couple categories for songs. The first is Don't Bother, songs I think just don't even bother with. Second is Neutral, songs I think are okay that maybe you'll like depending on what genres you like. A Good Listen is a song I think is a good listen regardless of your personal preference. And then Standout Tracks. And fun fact, this is the first Standout Track since the first week I did it way back in 2020. I did it for like a, three times before and then I stopped doing them. Since I've redone them again, we have our first Standout Track of the week, which is fun. Um, so, uh, this is also a uh, ordered list, by the way. And so, at 28, the first song I'm going to talk about is the, my least favorite from the week. And the number one is my top favorite song of the week. So here we go. Number one, Hitta by Marshmallow and Eptic Feet Juicy J. Uh, okay, this collaboration was uh, super interesting, and I think part of Marshmallow still thinks that he can come back to the more uh, creative side of EDM that's not as poppy, but not really. The lyrics are dumb, and the beat is okay in some sections, but overall it was just messy and an annoying track. So that was Hitta. Next up, uh, Superstructure Reimagined by Mern. Uh, and yes, it is pronounced Mern, I believe. I'm, I'm quite certain about that. I heard it on one of the Monster Cat or Call of the Wild. Uh, I felt that this reimagined track of the original uh, was super unnecessary. I don't hate this track in particular, but the reason it's in the don't bother category is because I just wouldn't listen to this over the original in any capacity. I think the creativity was a little bit lacking and the song was more drawn out in this reimagined version. Moving on to the neutral category now, songs I thought were just okay, but maybe you'll like them based on your own preference. We have Untouchable by Company. Uh, this is just one of those Never Say Die tracks that I just don't generally vibe with. The dubstep slash rhythm style for me is a little too much, especially on this track. And so uh, for my taste, this isn't it, but if you love the heavy NSD stuff, I think you'll enjoy this track. Up next, we have What We Do by Comey, I believe is how you pronounce it. Uh, this track is very odd to me. There are moments I really like it, uh, others that are cheesy and unnecessary, and I generally don't like the sound of the production, but I think the direction it was trying to take was good in some areas. It was just felt like a felt like a mishmash of kind of sounds and I and like tonalities, and that's why I generally just I think it's just neutral. Up next, Friendly Fires by Gareth Emery, feat Danny Poppet. Uh, Gareth Emery has hit us with another progressive trance track, and it is not up my alley. I do, in track, I do enjoy the track, especially its uplifting atmosphere, but I think it's everything that we've sort of heard before. It's nothing new or innovative. So, yeah. Up next is Retrograde, the Galantis remix by Elena Tilke. Uh, this is pretty much just a meh Galantis remix to me. I feel like it's a fairly rinse and repeat uh, in terms of Galantis when they do remixes with the kind of tropical house, steel drum, vocal chanting. It's getting pretty boring at this rate, even if it's always fun and lighthearted. It's just, yeah, I've heard so much of this from Galantis over the years now. Up next, By Your Side by Calvin Harris featuring Tom Grennan. Calvin Harris is here with a, another attempt at a summer anthem. And did he do it? Uh, you be the judge. I don't really dislike the track, but he's done so much better than this in terms of, especially coming out with a summer anthem or anthematic EDM house track. Up next, uh, Where Did You Go by Cascade. Uh, the track felt like a closer part two for me. It was my least favorite track from the recent Miles To Go EP, Closer Was. And I think uh, it just felt relatively boring, both that song and this one, Where Did You Go. I'll reiterate this time that, uh, well, I'll reiterate this time and time again, uh, but Progressive House feels super stale right now. It's practically been the same thing for almost 15 years, and I'm kind of just waiting for a little more little more oomph from it. I think Cascade did a great job with the Miles To Go EP, the rest of the songs that weren't closer, but yeah. Up next is Impossible by David Guetta and Morton featuring John Martin. Uh, this is a pretty big collaboration between all musicians here, uh, but it's a fairly standard big room house track that I feel like 
I would have loved a lot more about five years ago, but now today, nowadays the track is just a little, it felt unspecial. That's pretty much just the, the gist of it. Up next, Cyber Cuddle by Ace Aura. I've always been uh, fairly back and forth on Ace Aura, and I think this one was a slight miss for me. I really enjoyed the verse and build sections, but the drop was the part I actually disliked the most about the song. Uh, but I will say that that second drop is definitely miles better than the first one. So that was Cyber Cuddle. Up next is Visions by Direct. Uh, well, I did enjoy this quick take from Direct. Uh, it was pretty much just that, a quick take at literally being about just over two minutes long. It's super, super short. So I feel like it's a demo track more than anything. So while I liked the production of this track, I think Direct has done a lot better in the past and obviously a lot more fleshed out. Up next is Flowers and Sex by Emmeline and Smile. Uh, the non-drop the non-drop sections of this track are very tropical and minimal minimalistic, with the drop sections being this chopped up future bass style. Uh, the lyrics are super repetitive, and that's saying something because the song is only two and a half minutes long. It felt like a weird difference where the drop and non-drop sections were quite different from one another, and so. I did enjoy it for some sections, but I wouldn't listen to it a ton on repeat. Moving into the good listens category now, and might I say, this week is pretty strong. There are a ton of good tracks, so just note that any song from this point on are songs that I really do enjoy, even though they're like at the bottom of the list here for this week, like this is number 16. Uh, we have Higher Power, the Tiesto remix by originally by Coldplay. Uh, I'm honestly a fan of Coldplay, uh, and with the classic Tiesto House remix, it's a recipe for a song I would thoroughly enjoy. I don't think it's overly creative or intriguing, but definitely enjoyable for the most part. I'm not looking at this one as to be the most out there, cool EDM song, but it's more of like a, it is kind of like a summer anthem. It, it's some super, super powers at play here with Tiesto and Coldplay. They're just big names, and I sort of enjoyed it. Up next, Rewind by More Plastic. Uh, this is a hard-hitting DMB track with a lot of life to it. It's got some moments that give it a slight retro feel, uh, which was pretty nice, and for the most part, it was an enjoyable DMB track. Uh, I'm not sure how often I would come back to this track, though. It is good. Up next, Night Runners by Eddie. Eddie's second Monster Cat track is vastly superior to the first. This progressive house track doesn't feel as repetitive of the first as his original one was, uh, and is something I actually want to go back and listen to. So big ups for Eddie on the second Monster Cat track here. Uh, up next is Intoxicated by Drove featuring Justin Caruso. Uh, I think this is Drove's best song to date, actually. Uh, that being said, their discography is literally only seven songs at this point. Uh, but this one just had so much more energy than the rest of them did, and it's a solid Deep House track. Up next, You Don't Need to Ask by Kashmir featuring Czar. Uh, this new Kashmir song is fairly poppy and has a retro tonality to it, and Czar's vocals really help with that kind of old school, old school feel. Uh, I would say I enjoyed this track for sure. It wasn't anything crazy out there, but it was definitely a good, easy listen to. Up next, Give Them What They Want by Maja, I believe that's how you say it. Uh, Maja has always had this darker toned, more experimental style of production, and when it's really experimental, I don't really enjoy it, but when she's kind of toned back that, uh, to some degree, I've enjoyed the tracks more, which I guess makes sense. Uh, this is a great happy medium between, I think, her going super experimental and her being fairly, uh, normal or bland, I would say. I mean, I guess the opposite of experimental would be bland? What is the opposite of experimental? I don't know, but I thought this track was not bad. Up next, Take It Off by Keys and Crates featuring Bibi Borelli. This is a little short and sweet track with some funk and soul to it. I think production-wise, it's a fairly solid track and fun to listen to, especially with multiple listens, but I don't think that the short runtime, or, but I do think the short runtime did hinder it a fair amount. Up next, Gasoline by Dirty Phonics. Uh, I do think Dirty Phonics tried to go full-blown Riot on this track. Uh, it's got that same pseudo-rock elements to it that we've come to know and love from Riot. And, well, that's because those songs from Riot, they work. And so this song is very similar to a Riot track to me. And so I was a big fan. Tons of energy to it. I love the kind of rock elements mixed in with EDM. I'm a fan. 
Up next, Not For You by Slumberjack featuring Nicole Millar. Uh, this is a solid slumber Slumberjack track. It's sort of a hybrid future-based trap sound that we've all kind of come to know and love, at least for me, and appreciate of theirs in terms of their production. It kind of sounds a little future bassy, a little trappy. It's kind of a mix in between. I mean, the genres are synonymous with each other for the most part anyways. The production is full of quick refrains and hard hits, making it a fairly dynamic track, despite the drops feeling fairly minimalistic. That was not for you. Uh, up next is Wild and Broken by Seven Lions, Trivecta, and Blank, featuring RBBTS. The triple collab here has ended in a great success, in my opinion. It's a fairly standard mellow dub track with an anthematic big room feel uh, that is perfect for festivals. Uh, like, this will be the premier festival closing song for the next couple years, I think, especially in those kind of mellow dub festivals. Up next, Pigs in the Sky by Grabbits. Uh, I've always enjoyed Grabbits alternative R&B style that meshes great with the little hits of EDM he puts here and there. He really isn't an electronic music producer anymore. It's kind of this alternative style, uh, but I mean, he does do some of it here and there, and so I'll stick him in on the stuff. It's got solid vocal delivery here from Grabbits, uh, and the whole track reminds me of Break Me Down from his last LP, uh, which is one of my personal favorite Grabbits songs. So I was a fan of this one. Up next is Skin, I Give In To You by Vendetta, featuring Leon St. Huron and Liu. Uh, it's the last single from their uh, final LP that to be released uh, with Opened Eyes that came out the same day as this single did. Single. Uh, Vendetta pushes for more uh, deep house on this track more than anything else on the rest of the LP. And production-wise, I thoroughly enjoy the track, and while I thought the vocals were a little awkward at parts, they were a solid addition to the track. Up next, we've got No Time Left with Just A Gent featuring Seiya. Uh, well, No Time Left isn't Just A Gent's most creative endeavor, I still really love his production style. His darker, spacey tonality is something that really resonates with me, and Just A Gent's sound design is just so clean. This just feels like another good addition to his overall discography. Up next, Flashlight by Cloud9 featuring Mika Martin. Mika Martin. Uh, while Cloud9 normally produces a chill house track, uh, this is a little more chill out or garage than actual house. So it's got a lot less of a persistent beat to it, and therefore he's kind of uh, left some more empty space throughout the track, and I've really enjoyed that. Uh, Micah Martin has a good vocal, uh, he's a good vocalist to bring onto this newer style of track, and I really like how Cloud9 branched out a little bit with his style while still maintaining that kind of chill out atmosphere. Up next, Wheels Up by San Holo featuring Weezer. The insane collaboration between San Holo and Weezer has the, uh, or was the biggest success, I think, than anything on this LP was. I thought the whole album BB OK was a little underwhelming to me, but that's just not, yeah. Well, we're not going to get into that. Uh, it's San Holo going back to a kind of older future house style, and that especially resonated with me, particularly on this track. Uh, yeah, that was Wheels Up. And finally, our number one song, my favorite song of the week, and a standout track of the week. I think that I, a song that I thought is miles above everything else, is Hypnotize by Fairlane and Grant. This so far is my second favorite Grant release of the year, just behind Fix It. Uh, Fairlane and Grant team up for a killer track that is the perfect embodiment of both of their production styles. It's more future-based oriented than I thought it was going to be, and that was a very pleasant surprise for me. I love the track. I thought it deserved its standout recognition. Well, that was it for this week in EDM. Let me know what you guys think of these songs. Put them in the comment section below. What other artists would you like me to cover in the future? You know, that's just it. That's <laughs> And uh, yeah, I've been Bowtied Media, and I will see you guys in another video.